Okay. I'm here with uh, this week with uh, our new interim city administrator for the city of Atlantic, John Lund. John, thanks for uh, taking some time to uh, doing this with you. I know you're a busy guy. Ah, uh, it's absolutely no problem, Jeff. How's the first day of the job going? Um, it's going pretty well. Busy, but uh, it's going well. Good. Why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I was born, raised, and educated in Iowa, and I'm really proud of that fact. Um, I love Iowa, and Atlantic is classic Iowa. I got uh, my Bachelor of Special Studies in Political Science, Communications, and Psychology from Cornell College. Uh, I got my Master's. Cornell in College in Iowa? In Mount Vernon, yeah. Mount Vernon, okay. Yep. okay. Yeah, it's way better than the one on the yeah. coast. <laughs> um, and I got my uh, Master's in Public Administration with an emphasis on financial resource development and public policy from Drake University in Des Moines. Um, I got here because of my job offer uh, prior to this. I've worked at a grocery store and a meat department. I worked at Iowa Workforce Development, Department of Education on STEM policy, um, and that paper I, um, I believe is available. Um, and, uh, and then I worked at the Iowa State Legislature, um, first for Representative Dave Dio, uh, near Nevada, and then to Pat Grassley, who at the time was the Chair of Economic Development and Rebuild Iowa and now as House Chair of the Agricultural Committee. Whoa. Um, and on a personal level, I'm a geek, geek at heart. I, my three great passions are uh, my family. Um, my family and tradition is extremely important to me. Uh, my job and Star Wars, and that's... Star Wars, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Collector? You have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you've been doing at City Hall up until this week? Up until this week? Well, well, I know um, that you've been, you, you've had a lot, of, you've, you probably wore quite a few hats. I know yeah, you wore the um, uh, maintenance code. Uh, yep, I did code enforcement. I did, um, I, was I was designated the floodplain manager for the city. I had, it's just kind of, the hats switched whenever they needed to switch. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, basically what I've been responsible for, um, you know, I supported Doug uh, during the budget. Um, specifically, I was responsible for casting revenues at the, with loss in the hotel motel tax, uh, loss is a really volatile. Uh, that stands for local option sales tax. Yep, that's okay. correct. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, on a fiscal bait, fiscal year, it's very volatile. So, and there's a lot of really good and important programs that are dependent on that money. So, underestimating that or overestimating that can ha can have an impact. Yeah, um, lost money goes all over the place. It goes to CPC doles that out someplace. I think the city gets some of it too. It goes to parks. It mm -hmm. goes to a lot of special things come from lost money. Is that, exactly. Yeah. And uh, my former boss at the Department of Education, uh, Tom Schenk, is now the Director of Analytics and Performance in the City of Chicago and works right under the mayor. And I'm hoping that, I've been talking with him, he's um, honestly uh, probably the smartest human being I've ever met. Um, and I'm hoping that, we're, we've been in discussion of trying to create some sort of new um, forecasting model that will use Iowa's leading economic indicators to create the most accurate way to project uh, uh, lost in hotel motel tax money. Oh, interesting. Good. Um, Good. And, uh, but prior to that, we it just requires a lot of coordination um, using our historic data and then working with the, the Iowa Department of Revenue. And we have a good working relationship. Um, uh, well, as, as of today, then, I guess, you are the interim city administrator, mm -hmm. which right. I'm not sure what the interim means because you're, you're the guy right now. Yeah, yeah I have all the responsi uh, responsibilities of the city administrator, and we'll, and I'm, gonna, uh, I'm hoping to expand on that. Some of it's just out of pure necessity. Mm -hmm. um, the timing of this, uh, at least um, for me in this situation, has worked out well because the temperature is dropping, so code enforcement is going to kind of start to recede. Um, you want to spend as much time on that, and you can focus more on yeah, exactly, and the things that I enjoy doing. Right. Um, uh, so on Wednesday, we'll discuss um, kind of what the expectations of my position are. Um, that will be with the personnel and finance committee. That is correct, yeah. and um, create a uh, kind of a since the each city administrator has their own contract. We'll have a six-month working contract with. Um, with an evaluation at the end that will pro my guess is determine whether they want to pursue an executive search um, and find a new administrator or if they 
yeah. want to stick with me. Executive searches are very expensive. Um, well, and the mayor, the mayor's been pretty clear about not wanting to go down that yeah. route. Um, it, if it's a, I'm all about saving taxpayers money, mm -hmm. um, and uh, if I prove competent, um, you know, you'll get me get a city administrator a lot cheaper than you'll get for anyone else. Mm -hmm. um, and so basically, I look at like um, the word interim. It's kind of like almost like you could say probationary. Right. Or it's I think it really is more along probationary because you're right. They want to re. re er, not reevaluate, but evaluate you after six months. Yeah, and it'll but, be right after the city budget, which would be the perfect time because there's pretty much, I mean, the job, there's two major things that you can't, you can, there's no room for error, and that's organizing the city council agendas, making sure those work properly, things are on the, um, uh, on the docket and passed uh, in an organized way, and the budget, you, you can't mm -hmm. mess that up or there's serious problems. So. Yeah. The city council will be able to see me alone. Well, and Deb helps a lot with that. I always want to give Deb credit for um, her involvement in uh, those things. But have you have you been involved in the budget process in the past? Typically, yeah, that's sort of a city administrator, city clerk sort of role. But um, I've been involved with that a lot. Um, uh, I, I've organized them. Uh, me and Doug kind of we, we moved our the file into a shared document so that we could work on it both at the same time. Um, and uh, I, enter I entered in new numbers, coordinated with department heads, getting the numbers that they had requested in. And then um, Doug was the one that did a lot of, made the, the priority calls mm -hmm. and the transfers between funds to make sure the, the numbers all balanced. Yeah. So you've had some hands-on experience in the past the three years that you've been here? Uh, three and a half years, yeah. Yeah. That's going to be, you know, how important is that going to be now that, uh, you know, in, in terms of a smooth transition mm -hmm. and just, you know, your general picking the ball up and running with it. Um, that's extremely important. If I had not had any involvement with the budget in the past, I would not feel comfortable taking uh, mm -hmm. I, um, uh, the, my predecessor's position because the budget is that critical. Um, and it's not a you learn it as you go type of thing. Right. You have to know what you're doing and keep on time with stuff because um, there is a deadline by the state in the middle of March to have that turned into them and um, so you have to stay on top of it it's a lengthy process um, and if you're not projecting accurate numbers you could be in a budget crisis and um, that's a great way to lose your job <laughs> and rightfully so yeah well along those lines then what are some of the challenges that are facing the city budgetary and, and just in general um, well, uh, Atlantic faces some of the same challenges that every city faces. Not enough money, too many good ideas. Mm -hmm. um, we're also subject to the Iowa national economy, and those are externalities. We have no control over them. Mm -hmm. So things can come, uh, like the commercial property tax reform. That's something the city's going to have to make adjustments with in the future. Um, and I'd say probably our the major problem will be maintaining the roads. We have about a $400,000 gap um, from the resources that we have available to what we really need to maintain the roads as they are. But people should understand that road financing is a little bit different mm -hmm. than, than the general fund. Mm -hmm. Financing for roads comes from state fuel tax primarily, right? Um, some of it, we get um, a very heavy chunk from lost, though. Oh, okay. okay. Um, so there may be some years where um, we may get more, some years we may get less, but it's been around 300000 Okay. Um, it's, it's a hefty chunk. So it, when you say we want to make some up, where would that money come from? Would that come to general fund or? That's going to be the question. Um, I need to do a debt service full analysis. Uh, analysis. There's a, um, I think it's, a, it was either Cedar Falls or Iowa Falls. The one near, which one is near Waterloo? Um, uh, Cedar Falls. Yeah, <laughs> Cedar Falls did um, uh, a full analysis on their debt service levy. Um, and it was done in a way that people connect. It, it has meaning to people that understand that type of stuff, but it also has, it's, it's understandable to anybody. And it's, mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to be an economist to understand it. And that, that, is, that needs to be done and published mm -hmm. so we know where we're going moving forward because traditionally roads are financed through bonds. And um, from what my understanding is, things are gonna be tight debt service wise for the next 10 years mm -hmm. so um, we're gonna have to 
that's going to be the biggest problem yeah. solver. Well, and one of the one of the things that we have done a, a good job on in the past, you know, five or six years, are our roads. Mm-hmm. Our roads are really coming along nicely. Yeah. I, I think a lot of people wouldn't want to see us go backwards on no. that. But oh. then again, they don't want to pay any more taxes either. No, and that's the way I look at it, is that if we suddenly decide we don't want to maintain the work that we've done, then the high tax burden uh, property tax owners are dealing with right now, or property tax payers are paying right now, it was a waste of money. They mm-hmm. should never have had that tax burden. We should have just continued to let the roads erode, mm-hmm. which I, I, I'm adamantly against. The roads are actually our biggest, um, if you looked on a, pr- a balance sheet like from the private sector, it would be our largest asset. I believe we uh, read in um, one of our reports, we have about $36 million in, in street infrastructure. So it's important to maintain that. And it's, it's critical to economic development and the impression other people get when they come into our city. Yeah. Um, yeah. Bad, you notice bad roads, and you go from good roads to bad. Right. You're driving. Yeah, you do. That, that's for sure. Let's let's change gears a little sure. bit. Sure. Um, uh, you're well aware of the past week there's been some controversy mm-hmm. with the uh, mm-hmm. with Doug Harris, the former city administrator, yes. leaving. Um, that That's a done deal. It's happened. It, it's water under the bridge. We're moving forward mm-hmm. now. But there has been some questions about your youth and, and experience. Mm-hmm. Do you want to address that at all? Or? Okay. And I absolutely respect that question, and it's a question that should be asked and answered. Um, uh, I'll be 30 in December, and I know my youth is a concern. Um, and that's just, um, I can only uh, prove that it's not an issue over time. Mm-hmm. And um, there's no other way to get around. You can't change age. So that's, um, but I, I recognize that as a legitimate concern. And, uh, but I don't think my experiences, um, Doug and I had identical educations. I also have a certificate in grant writing and management. And when I was hired for this job, Doug told me that um, this was going to be a largely a mentoring situation. And that's what it has been for the past three and a half years. Um, and he was going to have me, earlier this summer, he informed me I was going to be working most, mostly on my own with the budget this fall as part of that mentorship and he'd act in a mostly an advisory capacity so that would have ha- happened anyway yeah. um and doug said i can reach out to him if necessary yeah. um well and i sh- we should probably say too that you have been working independently mm-hmm. in in the role that you have now as the as assistant to mm-hmm. the assistant the city administrator mm-hmm. yeah it's not like you were getting coffee and uh you know taking dry cleaners down you yeah. worked independently as, as the code enforcement person and, mm-hmm. and, and other tasks as well. Yeah, um, planning and zoning, board of adjustment, building permits. Um, those were all responsibilities that were strictly under me. Um, there was a lot of communications and projects and research that I also handled independently as well. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just kind of given the, just given the budget and the size of Atlantic, um, uh, if Doug didn't hire someone that was able to show initiative, right. um, he wouldn't be able to do his wouldn't, wouldn't have been able to do his job because there's um, and that's why I have no interest in filling my my current my old position now is because it it takes up time trying to micromanage people mm-hmm. and um, uh, we just the city doesn't have time for that. Yeah. There's too many important things going on. Well, to, then to, to a certain extent. Would you would you say it's a matter of perception then, and really how the next well I guess six months mm-hmm. go are going to be an important part in, is in for your career. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think the next six months will be the deciding part of my career. Um, it's kind of I don't want to make it sound like you know if this is a, a crew. I don't want to. To me, know. I think it's it is critical because um, as long as people will let me stay in Atlantic, I will stay in Atlantic. Um, uh, I've said, told you before, I'd love to be the Terry Cox of Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Terry Cox has been with the city of Harlan for I, for many, many years. Um, that's how I plan on making my, my mark on this world. And I have, I want to, and it's, it's also accountability. Mm-hmm. Things that I do now, if I pack my bags up in three to five years and head off somewhere else, claiming these achievements when I've actually, if I, I only followed bad practices to get, to make put on a show, mm-hmm. look up, looks good on paper. Um, that's irresponsible. It's selfish, um, and that's not the way I'm in, I do 
business. Yeah. And I know um, you mentioned that just today you've got a YPA luncheon to go. I yeah. know that you're reaching out to the public. Uh, um, in the past, I mean, it'll be nice probably for you to be in a situation where you're not telling people to mow their lawn. You can just go out and, and yes, have lunch I, with them. Um, my energy level is already much higher knowing that, um, you know, I, the city council and I will work out a way to find, to make sure that we st those tasks are still being accomplished. Mm -hmm. But hopefully they're done in a cost-effective way, okay. and um, that requires a new ordinance. There's um, a lot of options on the table. But I mean personally. Yeah. Personally for you, it's nice to be out in the public in a more positive light, rather than, than always telling people to do something they don't really want to do. Absolutely. <laughs> um, I mean, in my, in my current position, I, there's going to – everything depends. We could be in for a tight budget year. Um, a lot of stuff will depend on what we get back from Dale. Um, and uh, that can create conflict. Dale and is the county uh, county auditor, Dale yes. Sunderman. Mm -hmm. And he always gives us our taxable valuation, and that pretty much determines um, determines what our, our levies are. Um, we are already capped at uh, uh, the general fund. It can't go any higher. Mm -hmm. So if it falls... That's 18 you know, something, eight, right? 810. Eight, 810. Yeah. Um, eight, and um, debt service is directly linked to bonds that have been issued. So, and that, that is also capped. Um, we haven't reached that cap, but I, as I understand it, we're not that far away from it. Um, lost is uh, generated by economic activity, same as hotel and hotel tax. Mm -hmm. Gas tax is transferred to the city from the state. The only other uh, levy, the, really the only levy that is, you know, we can adjust is the trust and agency employee benefits. Mm -hmm. and. Um, we'll do whatever we can to try and keep that down, and um, and that in includes uh, focusing on safety and health for city employees. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing that might help on that is, I mean, you have one less salary in city hall. That does not hurt. It yeah. does not hurt. Um, and um, and I prefer it that way. If mm -hmm. I had someone, to, if I was replacing someone for the next six months. With I would have to teach them what I do, right. and that's that would be a distraction from me. Because there are, I mean, I, I'm not. I don't want to trade the impression I know everything already. This, there are some things that will, will be a learning process. It's just, just that two of the most critical things are are not an issue. One last thing. I know we, I've taken you way over the two minutes of that I promised <laughs> right. you. So one last thing. The mayor made uh, mention that he and and Doug Harris were going in different directions. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I've asked, and I'm not sure that I've gotten a, a good question, a good answer to what direction that is for the city. Mm -hmm. What direction do you want to take the city? And, and, and is that on the same page as the mayor and, and the council? I think um, what people have to understand is Doug came from Falmouth, which was a, um, a suburb of a larger city in Maine. Um, urban areas, suburban areas, and rural areas all have different needs and priorities. Um, Doug turned that suburb around um, and it, he had to deal with explosive growth and um, it changed the face of that community. A lot of people that lived there their whole lives suddenly didn't recognize it anymore and they were angry. But new people that had moved into town and liked it there were very happy. There was a lot of conflict. A lot of people there, uh, people were worried about lo loss of open space in the environment. Um, we're not in the age anymore where we're going to have probably have a factory that drops in town with 500 new jobs and we have to rush to create new infrastructure, build new homes, those types of things. Um, so, I, But I think Doug maintained that conservative approach to growth. Um, I think I'm fairly close in line with the mayor on um, recreation and, and basically I think the mayor's priorities are community priorities which are the same to me.